Hey everyone, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and today I've got kind of a special little project that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be melting some gold. Now, you guys know Teacher. He decided that he wanted me to go ahead and take some of his gold that he had and make a three nines fine gold skull, and, and if there's any extra, then to make whatever else I can make. So in this video, I will be melting some pamp bars, Swiss bars, things like that, and we're gonna do our best job to pour a cool skull, and if we have some left over, we'll pour a RFT button or something like that. That being said, inevitably, somebody's gonna comment that why did we go ahead and melt down gold bars? They already were stamped and all that stuff. I get it. This is a special project, and it's for fun, and it's still gonna have three nines fine gold at the end of it. That being said, let's go ahead and get started and pour some gold. All right, time to melt this gold and make a gold skeleton. So I was debating on whether or not to season this porcelain crucible and heat the gold in this and pour directly into the mold, which is a new mold from that. But I have found using map gas in this, without a couple of torches, it takes forever to get this accomplished. So I'm not gonna use two torches in the crucible to pour from. Instead, I'm going to use my electric furnace, but in order to not contaminate the gold, I've ordered a brand new, never been used crucible. So we're going to use this one, get rid of this old one, and only pour the gold from a brand new fresh pot or crucible. That way, we're 100% certain there's no silver, copper, or anything else in there. Anyway, I want to let you know the reason why I'm not pouring from a porcelain crucible is because, like I said, it's just a lot of work to get the gold melted, and I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just pour straight from the electric furnace into the mold, but we had to use a fresh one. All right, we'll get this turned on, fired up. We'll get the gold in here, 3.935 troy ounces. It's probably more than this mold will need, um, but I'm not quite sure, so we'll pour it, and whatever's left, we'll make into a little button. So the furnace is definitely getting hot enough to melt the gold. It melts about 1,064 degrees. And that's only about 20 degrees less than copper. So it takes a little bit of heat to get the gold melted. We're going to set it to 1125 to make sure I have time to pour. While that's doing that, I've got to preheat my mold because we don't want any steam explosions. we got to remove all the moisture out of it. So we're right at the temperature I want to be at. I just want to double check to make sure everything in here is as it should be. And it looks like we have molten gold. Well, here goes nothing. Figured I'd dump the rest out to see what we got left. We'll remelt this and make it into a button, but I'm curious to see how this came out. First time using this mold. A little bit of fracture lines. but otherwise not too bad. Not too bad. Let me go ahead and get the rest of this gold back in the crucible and we'll take a look at that up close. So we've got the skeleton quenched. I think it came out pretty good. There are some fracture lines, 
up above on the head, but I think it gives it character. And I don't want to remelt it because it was such a clean pour. The back looks pretty good as well. So I think I'm going to leave it like it is. I think I'm going to leave it like it is. And uh, call it a day. I've got the rest of the gold in the crucible heating up. We're going to try to pour the last bit of gold into a small button and see how it comes out. In an effort to make one solid piece, we're just gonna pour it into this little crucible and hope that we can get it all in one pour. There's just not much left in the main vessel, so it's getting very difficult to pour from. That's all of it. Too bad we have a little dot here. See if I can melt that all together. All right, I figured I'd go ahead and show you the final products. First up is the skull. Wanted to give you a good look at it. Again, I think there's a few fractured lines up here, but it still came out good. And I went ahead and stamped it. It's actually 3.08 troy ounces, but not quite 3.1. So I didn't want to type in or stamp in 3.08. I think it would clutter it. It's so close to three ounces, we'll just call it that. Three nines fine gold. Not too shabby. I went ahead and hammered out the button so that I had a flat surface and I combined all the metal. So we've got the RFT stamp on the front and three nines fine gold, 26.6 grams. That's the smallest stamps I had. I wish I had a lowercase g, but either way, 26.6 grams, three nines fine gold. I wanted to go ahead now and show you guys the final way up so that you know what we have here compared to what we started with to see if we lost any gold. All right, I've got my digital scale set to ounces Troy. And if you remember from the very beginning, we fluctuated between 3.935 and 3.937 Troy ounces. We'll start with the 26.6 gram button first. And that comes out to 0.855 Troy ounces. And when we add in the skull, we're at 3.935. So we basically, I mean, if we want to get really nitpicky, we lost two thousandths of an ounce, Troy ounce, in material. And that's at worst case scenario. So definitely didn't really lose any gold. That makes me happy. Let me go ahead and remove these really quick. I'll show you the big skull by itself first. And that's 3.08 Troy ounces. So like I said, over the three ounces that we stamped it, but I didn't want to put 3.08 on there. I figured if anyone was going to resell this at some point, it would be weighed and tested anyway. So three ounces is close enough. I think it came out nice. Personally, I think it has a lot of character. Hopefully, teacher loves it. And then the button, we'll set this to grams. And we'll just weigh it up really quick. 26.62 grams. So again... Didn't want to type in or stamp in 26.62, but we put 26.6, three nines find, AU, can't get mad at that. I think it came out pretty nice considering it was a last of the crucible pour. And again, if you want to know the process on it, I basically just folded it over and kept on hammering it with a heavy sledgehammer, just trying to flatten it out as much as possible and thin it out a little bit so that I had room to fit my stamp. Once I had enough room, I called it good, and we stamped it. Anyway, just wanted to show a little bit of gold pouring. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this gold pouring video. I know I didn't show all the steps, but I really wanted to just do this for one of my subscribers and one of my friends, and he sent me the gold, and I think it came out pretty good. I hope he's happy with it. I'll be getting this back in the mail for you, brother. Thank you for allowing me the chance to melt some gold and have fun doing it. If you enjoyed the gold melting video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting, happy stacking, and thanks for watching.